Does, does Aristotle say the bones come first and then the flesh and the muscles? Are you, are you, is that what the Quran, I'm not, I'm not saying it. Can you, can you, is that, are you what, sure? is that what the Quran specifically says? Absolutely. This is exactly then, what the Quran says. Then, chapter, then chapter we're 23. Done because you just demonstrated the Quran is wrong. Versus you have, you have differentiation of mesoderm. Right. That within the mesoderm, you have segregation into things like embryonic mesenchyme. And then you have these cartilaginous centers that will form bone. Right. And these are forming simultaneously with each other. Right. Right. And these are forming simultaneously with each other. Right. Right. And these are forming simultaneously with each other. Right. So this is the verse in question. Um, I want just to draw attention to the usage of the letter fa. Now, this fa is a conjunction and it has the meaning of then. The way it's translated in the verse is and, but um, according to the classical commentaries of the Quran, the ones I've, that I've looked at, I've looked at a couple, and they all suggest that it is for uh, ter what is known as tertib or order. So there is order. And this is how uh, most um, people look at the verse as it's describing the stages of, of embryology. So that's one, one point. And secondly, and this is the, the section that is in question specifically, is the following. These are the two statements made by al and there's a fat separating them. So it would suggest that one follows the other. And the embryologist, he actually stated that in embryological studies, that the bones and flesh form simultaneously. There was a misconception, I think, by the, uh, the Muslim person that was speaking to him, who suggested that it was referring to order, one, one happened after the other. Now, what I'm going to be presenting in this particular video is not my own opinion. This is from a classical exegesis that was written centuries before anyone knew about any of these stages in any detail. So the point of the matter is, there's a relationship between these two statements. So it says, We created the mudra into idham. So a mudra is a lump of flesh. And Ivam are bones. So the question is, is the whole lump of flesh turning into bones? Or, or is it part of the mudra that's turning into bones? The translation says that it's from, we made from the lump, the lump of flesh, bones. And this is actually supported by the uh, classical commentaries. And the reason why is because lahm is actually mentioned in the next statement after this fat. So we have here mudra, which is a lump of flesh. So you can imagine, let's, I'll just draw, draw this. We have a lump of flesh. And then we made this lump of flesh into idham, bones. So you can imagine there's bones there. Then it says, after this, kasawn al-idham, lahma. We actually clothed these bones. And what did we use to clothe these bones? Lahm. So the lahm is what is what is used to clothe the bones. Al mudra is also lahm. It's a it's a lump of lahm. But the point to note is that the verb used was not khalaqna. So you notice that in each of the steps khalaqna, khalaqna, khalaqna. But here it's kasona, meaning that it was already there. This lahm was already there, and the fact that al mudra turned to laham means that it actually grew during, those, during the period when the actual evam, the bones, were formed, which indicates that the flesh, some of it changed into bone and some of it didn't and some of it was used to clothe the bone. And uh, just a final point is we have here an mudra, as we said was a lump of flesh. And in the next step, the bones are clothed in flesh. So f this f lahm, this flesh, is a much greater size than an mudra. So what is happening, if we have here the mudra, over time, it's getting bigger and bigger. And that's what the verse indicates. وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَيِّدْنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمْ